what's going on you guys so i just want to mention this video is brought to you by this old copy of quantum break it actually came with the copy of alan wake that i'm going to be talking about today but i will say the video is going to be a little bit long so i just want to let you know it's broken up into pieces the first piece is going to be my impressions starting it off the second piece is just going to be how i felt about the game once i got all the way through it so the third part is going to be about alan wake's american nightmare that's the standalone game that came after alan wake but wasn't necessarily a sequel and then the fourth part of this video is basically just what i want from alan and wake too so it's going to be a little bit lengthy if you're going to stick around for the whole thing you know grab some food or whatever and just enjoy it and yeah on to the video all right so my first impressions of this game was a little shaky because you had to maintain that battery life on the flashlight and it wasn't clicking at first to not overuse it and only flash a little by little instead of just holding it down and draining it and so in the beginning you know i was getting my butt kicked once i was running out of bullets because i was just shooting so much and not maintaining in the weaponry either this game isn't exactly like resident evil where you have to do you know weapon management to the t you do need to use your resources very wisely outside of having the flashlight you're going to have your regular gun a revolver and a shotgun for the most part and you have to make sure that that you use everything with caution because if you run out those enemies are going to be on you and they will beat on you and be on you until your life runs out you could try to run away sometimes i was able to run away a little bit but your character uh, alan wake does get tired and he will slow back down and they're going to catch up and they're going to have shovels they're going to have like axes that they throw at you as well and you won't be able to just run away forever sometimes you can jump up too as well just to get a nice little leap ahead but it's still not enough to get away from everybody so be very mindful of that but once you catch on i will say it only takes about an hour and a half to two hours to really catch on to that the way the combat works and how the flashlight works after that you're smooth sailing the game really isn't that long each chapter takes about an hour to an hour and a half there's six main chapters and then two special chapters afterwards so you're still looking at about 10 hours or maybe a little less i doubt you'll play this game for longer than 12 hours overall it's still very good for what it is it's short and sweet and that's how a horror game should be you shouldn't spend too long on a horror game if the story doesn't provide you know enough detail and enough lore behind it i will definitely recommend this game for anybody that's looking for another survival horror game this is an old school one it has been remastered, but I was playing the original Xbox 360 version on Xbox Series X, and I was definitely enjoying that version of it. It was still very smooth with the frame rate boost, and I'd never really had any issues as far as any stutters or a lot of glitches or anything like that. It was a pretty smooth experience. I will say some of the controls can get a little wonky sometimes because it is an older game, but it handles very well and it still lives up to this day and I can see why it got a remaster version I would say try to get the remaster version if you can't get your hands on the old version just because you can play it on newer hardware outside of like the Series X maybe the PS5 and I'm sure this game is cheap nowadays because it is still just a remaster this is going to be a light review of the base game i'm going to go ahead and play alan wake's american nightmare after this and add that towards the tail end of this video and a couple other things extra as well but just for this game i will say it is still worth playing i will tell you that you probably should get the remaster just because it's going to have an updated textures because i believe this game was at like 540p and it was up resed on the series x to 720p it didn't look bad but it looked more probably Nintendo Switch ish kind of you know but as a game it was still fun there was some stuff that was a little wacky I really thought that the story overall was wacky it was a funny story but it was just like like the darkness is trying to consume him and it took his wife Ooh, right and it was kind of goofy it didn't come off scary it was some stuff that they were trying to do like do a lot of jump scares here and there it really didn't work <laughs> it really didn't work if anything it was just like the sudden loud noise 
in the room will kind of you know annoy you a little bit i like survival horror where you're actually given the ability to fight back they do give you the ability to fight back here so it was right up my alley i hate the ones where you're running with a flashlight and you don't get no type of offense whatsoever you just gotta run and hide i don't really like that i like to feel empowered a little bit and this game finds a way to make you feel empowered especially in the second half of the game now the game is short but in the second half, you really do feel powerful with your weapons. You'll start getting these flash grenades and then when you use them, they just take out everything in the area that's trying to attack you. And you get really used to, you know, blinding them real quick and then you get a couple shots and they're gone. Sometimes it did get a little difficult or frustrating when it didn't work, but the game also gives you a lot of stuff in the area, which is like the usual suspects where you would have like a canister that's full of like uh, propane probably and you'd shoot it and it'll blow up and it'll take out a few people and you guys are used to that with other games already but you know that really helped with the combat also it had moments where you just kind of run in a little bit those kind of moments really slowed the game down for me because i didn't really like it as much when you were running from something like a bunch of crows for example you got to flash the lights on the crows and i don't really like birds but that is what it is um the game is still overall worth playing you will get through this uh rather quickly and there were some goofy moments like there's moments where you gotta fight like possessed objects in the area and they'll just like levitate shake and then just like launch themselves at you and it's just like what is going on and it's just kind of hilarious and if you die from it it can be very frustrating because they hit you really hard and then the ultimate moment of just like fighting a tractor it's like yes you fight a tractor and then it's like nobody powering the tractor it's just the tractor itself and you basically have to survive it you don't really like attack it really you can kind of shoot at it but it's not going to do much you really really just have to survive the tractor but it was so goofy it was just like i really have to survive a tractor there are moments where you drive a car and the controls are a little shaky on that but it's still drivable it's a lot better than borderlands i will say that but um it was a little satisfying where you could just kind of mow down these ghost enemies that are trying to attack you with the car <laughs> it would be a little silly but yeah most of the enemies are these ghost creatures who are just pretty much human beings with like weapons and they're just trying to attack you and all you do is just blind them blind them shoot blind them shoot and that's the whole game you know you'll find these coffee mugs every now and then in the game and i thought at first that was to improve your health but it actually wasn't really improving the health at all i think it was literally just collect them i guess but it didn't do much for me i got a few achievements but i don't know if it was from that but um yeah i overall say definitely give this game a try play it it shouldn't be too expensive for the remaster version you could go ahead and play this version on series x with no problem but if you want the updated visuals i would say definitely go for the remaster this one character was in the story named barry and he gave a little bit of comedic value to it and it made it a little bit more tongue-in-cheek here and there and it was really silly there's like this after part at the end of the story where they really change up the game a little bit and you're shining your flashlight on words and then when you actually shine it on there for a long period of time not too long but it will manifest whatever that word was right in front of you and it would be weird it would be like something like your flash upgrades or your reload for weapons and stuff it'll like manifest some some ammo right in front of you and then they have barry here and there just saying a bunch of stuff and it was pretty comedic and everything but yeah the game is is worth playing and you can probably find this game at 20 dollars or less for the remaster definitely go for it just because it's probably easier to find and i think the xbox 360 60 xbox one version is probably harder to find other than that i do think uh this game has some ties to the game control which i believe that's more of a dlc thing and i wanted to talk about that towards the end of this video and uh the nightmare american nightmare version of this game i think that's like the standalone dlc i'm gonna play that next and i'm gonna attach that to this video and um yeah other than that thank you for watching so far leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already um on the part two all right, so after I got done with the base Alan Wake game, I moved over to Alan Wake American Nightmare, and right away, I noticed a 
big difference in the graphics just coming from uh, I guess the Xbox 360 version of the first game to the next this one wasn't considered a full sequel it was just like a standalone sort of DLC it's very short but there were a lot of improvements that they made from this compared to the first you know iteration of the series right away you know I noticed that there were more fine-tuned with the controls just a little bit and they changed the icons on the health and battery meter and notice also there was some better weapons in this game as far as some semi-automatics and then there were some familiar weapons as well uh, the game was really cool it started off with the cameo from Barry who is with you a lot of times in the base game there was a guy in there that they created that was a new enemy type for this particular game that I thought was interesting and I don't think I've seen before where if you shine your light on him he basically split in to two and he became a little bit more weaker as he split and I think he was able to split up into almost eight people or I think maybe more but I think it was eight people and by the time he splits all the way down to eight people you can pretty much take him out in like one shot but it was pretty interesting because he was not in the base game and there was a couple other guys here like that too that just showed up like a dude who just throws grenades at you from afar and then really really big dudes that get up close to you and they really try to attack you this game had everything it needed to be a full sequel but it was just too short and it wasn't really promoted that way even though i guess it came out two years after it was just a continuation of alan wake going through his process i guess of dealing with the nightmares it was still very very good it was very good the interesting thing here was the enemy that he had to face was himself which was almost like a black suit spider-man in a way from uh the original spider-man movie series like movie three like alan wake's doppelganger or like evil twin was in his suit and he was just styling and profiling and basically taunting you the entire game it even got to the point where you would go up to little tvs and you would turn the tv on and he's talking to you through the tv and i thought it was pretty interesting here because in this game they actually had the actual actor the voice actor play on camera and act out the scenes and it was something you didn't see that often in the first game but they did it every time you saw the twin you know he was always on the tv and he was always doing some crazy stuff and you would sit there and watch it and I thought it was very good for this particular game and they put a lot more effort into this standalone and I thought like man it really could have been a full sequel but unfortunately it was like three and a half hours to four hours it really wasn't long at all so I could see why it wasn't a full sequel but there was a lot of new concepts and a lot of different variety of stuff here that you didn't see in the first game and it's just unfortunate that this wasn't the sequel because with the new sequel coming out I feel like that probably could have been Alan Wake 3 if they made this game a little bit longer and added more stuff to it but it was okay for what it was it's definitely a must play if you've played the first Alan Wake because it just continues the story it gives you a little bit more of what you need going into the newer games um just to get more of an idea of what's going on in Alan Wake's head and all of the funny stuff that was going on in this world um I definitely enjoyed this one just as much as the original game at this point you should be very familiar with how the game plays and how to work your weaponry to your advantage so that you don't run out of your bullets when going against some of these new enemies types this was a fun experience i really enjoyed it and i hope that even with the newer game they have another standalone where they improve on that one as well maybe a year or two after just like how they did with this game this was fun it definitely was exciting and hilarious the entire way through so i recommend that you play this as well with the original alan wake right before we play the new game alan wake 2 all right so right before i talk about what i want for alan wake 2 i just want to mention real quick i am aware that there is alan wake content within the game control and i haven't played control yet either that's also going to be a future video that's probably going to be part two to this video and when i talk more about control itself as well as its other content and then i'm going to talk about the alan wake expansion that's within control and how they mesh those universes i guess once i get to that point 
point. Um, I'm very excited to play Control. That's one of the games I'm going to play next, mainly because I'm a huge fan of the Matrix. Uh, not so much Resurrections, the latest movie, but everything before. And this girl can shoot and fly and do a whole bunch of abilities that was done in those movies. So I'm looking forward to playing that. And I'm looking forward to talking about that on this channel. And yeah, we can move on from that. I can't wait to get to it. But I also want to mention Alan Wake 2. So to end this video off, I'm just going to talk briefly about what I want from Alan Wake 2. And basically for that game, it can do pretty much the same thing that it was doing in Alan Wake 1. The only nitpick I can possibly have is if you run out of bullets, I just need some form of a melee attack. If those guys get close to you, all the ghost creatures and everything, you know, if you don't have any more light or any more bullets, you pretty much screwed in Alan Wake. And and I just need some sort of move. Like it could easily be like the roundhouse kick from Leon in Resident Evil 4. Like that's literally all I would need, but some form of a melee kick. Cause other than that, they just gonna start wailing on you, wailing on you. And there's really nothing you can do about it. And I'm like, I'm not about to let some dude run up on me with a shovel. It's just not gonna go down like that. So that's my only thing I would ask for. I'm not sure if they're gonna do it, but if they don't, it's okay. It's still going to be a fantastic horror game. I'm I'm hearing that it's going to be a little bit more survival horror based and a little less action so that's okay i understand that's probably going to be different from what i've played this whole time maybe it depends on how much liberty they take with the horror and the action but i'm waiting for it it's going to be a hot game and if you like this content please leave a like on it leave a comment and subscribe if you haven't already share this out to anybody into survival horror and i will catch you on the next video peace